back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown of the trailer for Madam Web, the Sony Spider-Verse movie coming February 2024. We think this movie is starring Dakota Johnson as Cassandra Cassie Webb, a paramedic in Manhattan with clairvoyant abilities based on the Marvel psychic first voiced by Stan Lee's wife Joan in the Spider-Man animated series in the 90s and co-starring Sydney Sweeney as Julia Carpenter Spider-Woman, Celeste O'Connor as Maddie Franklin Spider-Woman, Isabel Merced as Anya Corazon, Aranya Spider-Girl, and Tahar Rahim as an Ezekiel Sims version of Spider-Man, as well as Adam Scott in some unknown role that might be Uncle Ben. Let's break down this trailer shot by shot, connect this all to Venom and Craven if we can, and figure out what's going on before Dakota Johnson's voice puts us to sleep. All right, let's get started. Hey, come on, get your stuff. Let's go. Okay, Cassie stands in front of the Four Star Diner. So the Four Star Diner was first referenced in The Amazing Spider-Man number 30 in 2001, which was the first appearance of the Ezekiel Sims character. This diner in the comics is really a hangout for Peter and his friends. And in front of this diner, you can also see a working payphone, our first clue that this film is taking place in the past because nowhere has these anymore. From outside the diner, you can actually see Julia and Maddie dancing on the table, goofing around with some boys on the Midtown High basketball team. You can actually see their shirts inside. And of course, Midtown High is a school Peter Parker goes to. So this is obviously a different universe than the MCU, which Marvel Studios kept designating as 616, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, which is also produced by Sony, the Venom universe was designated as Earth 688. But this movie's official description begins with, quote, meanwhile in another universe, which was the way in Into the Spider-Verse, the post credit scene designated that we were transferring to Miguel O'Hara's universe, and using it here indicates that this movie is taking place in a completely different universe from any other Spider-Verse that we've seen before. Like it's not the Sam Raimi, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man universe, it's not the Mark Webb, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man universe. It's not the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's not the animated Spider-Verse. And it's probably not Venom's universe or Craven's universe or Morbius's universe. It kind of seems like these three girls are wearing color-coded wardrobes that are consistent with their superhero costumes. Maddie wears light blue with red stripes. Anya wears a yellow top. Julia wears black and white. Anya's shirt actually reads, I eat math for breakfast, which is the kind of shirt Tom Holland's Peter Parker would really be into. But then Ezekiel Sims Spider-Man enters this diner and he looks pretty pretty menacing. There's quite a bit of interesting detail in this Spider-Man costume that I'll dig into later, but things may not be what they seem with this guy. Cassie smashes a bottle on his head before we see him toss her to the ground as this room inverts from his point of view. Very Spider-Man move. Actually, at the very beginning of the shot, you can see Julia on the ground there incapacitated. So presumably he took her out first or maybe even killed her here. Ezekiel similarly chokes Maddie and then chokes slams Anya and then flips the knight out of Cassie's hand to stab her, leading to her looping back to outside the diner to try this again. We are reminded of the recurring, let's do this one more time by all the Spider-Man variants in the Spider-Verse films. All right, let's do this one last time. Let's do things differently this time. All right, people, let's do this one last time. So who is everyone and what the hell is going on? So Madam Web or Cassandra Webb first appeared in The Amazing Spider-Man number 210 from 1980, where she originated from Salem, Oregon and was a disabled clairvoyant and precognitive mutant who worked as a professional psychic. Webb got her nickname because of her medical condition required her to be hooked up to an elaborate chair with a series of metallic tubes that resembled a spider web. So she's not really anyone who was bitten by a spider. It's just that she, like many of Peter Parker's villains in the pages of Spider-Man comics, just has some kind of interesting visual parallel to spiders. Like Doc Ock is a being that has eight legs, right? But the character would go on to have greater significance to the lore of Spider-Man. She is considered to be associated with the Spider-Verse and this cosmic force, someone deeply tied to the web of life and destiny. She appeared in Spider-Man the Animated Series in the 90s, where she was voiced by Stan Lee's wife, Joan. Lee. And in the Ultimate Spider-Man from the 2010s, we got another version of Madame Web, this time Julia Carpenter taking up the mantle. And we should note that in the animated Across the Spider-Verse film, Miles' guidance counselor, voiced by Rachel Dratch, was named C. Weber, which might have been a reference to this character. Now, Julia Carpenter's Spider-Woman first appeared in 1984 as part of a Secret Wars miniseries who got her powers from a mix of spider venom and plant extracts. In addition to becoming Madame Web at some point in her future, she appeared in a number of crossover storylines and also cameoed in animated form in the background of Across the Spider-Verse. Maddie Franklin's Spider Woman first appeared in 1998 and became Spider Woman in 1999. She's the niece of J. Jonah Jameson with memorable arcs in the Jessica Jones alias run and Dead No More The Clone Conspiracy storyline with Ben Riley. Then Anya Corazon, aka 
Spider Girl and later Aranya might have had the most badass looking cameo in Across the Spider Verse. She debuted in 2004 and is probably best known as the main character in the Spider Man 2017 animated series on Disney XD. Meanwhile, Ezekiel Sims debuted in that Amazing Spider Man number 30 from 2001 as a barefooted weirdo who encounters Peter Parker with similar powers to Spider Man, but he got his powers, we learn later, from Spider Totems while exploring jungle ruins. He asks Peter Parker some interesting questions about how exactly he got his powers from that spider bite, which leads to us learning that it wasn't the radioactivity from the spider bite that gave Peter Parker his powers, but rather part of a cosmic event that links all spider people into the web of life and destiny, and that Peter Parker was really selected by a figure called the Great Weaver. Ezekiel's really trying to stop Morlun and the Inheritors, beings who hunt spider people throughout the multiverse and feed on spider things. So here, Cassandra, or Cassie, as a clairvoyant who can see the future, plays through these visions in her mind, kind of like Doctor Strange foreseeing future events in Infinity War, but in this case, she's not actually time traveling or time slipping. She's really just kind of like mentally playing them out. And in an additional vignette that also released today, the film's director, S.J. Clarkson, said that even though Cassie Webb has visions of the future, these visions are quite fragmented because she doesn't see anything clearly. Or it could be that maybe Cassie's visions are real in a multiversal sense, because there's a chance this movie goes more into the multiverse than we think. Okay, let's move on. A week ago, I spent my life racing against time. I'm gonna help you out today, okay? Trying to save people who are running out of it. Cassie! Until one moment changed everything. Welcome back to the land of the living. Cassie in this movie is a New York paramedic. In the promotional vignette, Dakota Johnson says that this movie takes place before the character ends up in the wheelchair. So by the end of this film, we might see a version of the character more like her comic book and animated appearances. We see the New York Triborough Bridge, though principal photography of this film happened in Boston. There is a classic, is this car gonna fall off the bridge or not? Moment. Remember Spider-Man No Way Home had Peter saving the Dean of Admissions for MIT this way. And in the Amazing Spider-Man film in 2012, Andrew Garfield and Peter Parker has to save a kid from the car hanging off the bridge when he was fighting the lizard. Adam Scott plays another paramedic whose name is unknown as of this taping, but there are rumors he is playing Ben Parker, Uncle Ben, which would line up with this movie being set in an era with payphones. But the shot of Manhattan includes towers that were not built in the city until the past decade, so I don't know. Emma Roberts is going to appear in this movie, part unknown, but it is rumored that she's playing Mary Parker, Uncle Ben's sister, who is Peter Parker's mom. We get some cryptic imagery here. The windshield splinters into a spider web pattern. We see a woman in water giving birth, and on the left side of screen, some netted fabric that kind of looks like the texture of the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man suit. Remember where the webbing stuck out above the red fabric? This mother seems to die as she leaves her baby nearby this fabric and her finger just kind of runs down that little baby hand. And it seems like Cassie is witnessing all this from behind a literal spider web in the memory that she talks about later in this trailer referring to her mom in Peru. So I think we are seeing her fractured perception of the web of life and destiny. While Cassandra Webb is not necessarily herself a spider thing, at least historically in the comics. So I think Cassie is witnessing the birth of some other spider thing. Maybe one of these spider women, maybe the birth of Ezekiel Sims, maybe the birth of herself, maybe the birth of this universe's Peter Parker, which would make Adam Scott being Uncle Ben, maybe, saying, welcome back to the land of the living. A bit ironic. Does this mom giving birth in the shot look like Emma Roberts to you? It's kind of hard for me to tell, but let's move on. I don't understand what's happening. I've been having visions. I knew he was gonna die. I think I'm seeing the future. Okay, so Cassie tells a doctor about her visions, about knowing someone was going to die and seeing the future. This doctor seems to be using an older computer. So again, this might be like in the early 2000s or in the mid 2000s. We see Cassie performing CPR on a construction worker who then morphs into a fellow paramedic as Cassie's hands become bloody. This paramedic will later be hit by a truck, confirming that Cassie can see the future. And the way this manifests is a vision of Cassie trying to save someone just to end up with the blood on her hands of the person fated to die. So she takes personal responsibility to try to prevent those fates. We've all had the experience of going to a friend's house and seeing something on their shelf that makes your jaw drop. Well, with Fan Home, you can be that friend. Fan Home is a brand dedicated to developing unique collections and build-up models from brands like Star Wars, Marvel, and more. A Fan Home subscription gets you magazines loaded with trivia and stories about your favorite fandom, but also everything you need to build your very own Millennium Falcon. Fan Home's Millennium Falcon model is so detailed. The completed ship is over 30 inches long, and the pieces are all die-cast metal in ABS plastic, so it looks great. Plus, the cockpit and thrusters light up, which is super fun. With Fan Home subscription, you get new parts every month, plus instructions on how to put everything together so you can build your model up bit by bit, rather than be overwhelmed trying to do it all at once. On top of that, you'll also get a Millennium Falcon mug, a hat, and a binder. A Fan Home subscription is the perfect way to make your collection stand out. To get started, just click the link in the description below. And then on to the next clip. 
New York City is a whole new level of crazy these days. Okay, Cassie sits on a train that I have never seen the interior of on any New York City train line, but much like the movie Final Destination, or really the time looping on a train movie source code, or kind of like David Dunn's ability to see people's futures in Unbreakable, Cassie sees barefooted Ezekiel entering the train car. There's a guy who says New York is a whole nother level of crazy these days, perhaps referencing some recent superhero activity in this universe. He's holding a PSP, and Madam Web is a Sony production, so it makes sense. However, the PSP was discontinued in 2014, and it was released to North America in March 2005. I would say this guy could just have an old gaming device, but this is Sony, and any opportunity they have to push the latest version of anything onto us, they're gonna use. So I think this might be specific. Now this gray-haired woman with the newspaper does kind of look like a classic appearance of Madame Webb. And you know what, I, I don't know who this actress is, but I think she would have been better casting than Dakota Johnson. There is a sign on this train car that reads, if you see something, say something, which is often something you see in public transportation, especially after 9-11, but you can see Cassie reading this as kind of a call to action. She sees something and has to act. We also to see a poster of the Statue of Liberty in the fetal position, which is interesting. So Ezekiel attacks again, hurting Anya and Maddie and Julia, and they're all wearing the same clothes that they were wearing before the diner. So maybe it's a dream that Cassie has of those girls while she's falling asleep on the train in her mind, putting all of them together in a common diner location that Peter Parker would love to attend. Next section. This is an emergency. Get off the train. That man's trying to kill you. What? Who are you? What, what is going on? I can see the future. Oh. What the hell? Now we see Ezekiel Sims Spider-Man fighting some cops on the 42nd Street subway station. And I gotta say, this guy loves choke slamming women in particular, like a little too much. It's like his one move. In this light, we get a better look at Ezekiel Spider-Man suit. It is red webbing on black, red goggle eyepieces, and around his waist, it kind of just looks like red wiring that looks separate from the rest of his suit. The music we hear throughout this trailer is a remixed version of Billie Eilish's 2019 song, Bury a Friend. It's a dark, edgy pop song about being haunted, the way Cassie probably feels haunted by their own future. In the woods by that crashed taxi where we saw Cassie standing before, she approached the diner at the top of the trailer. She explains to these other girls that she can see the future and Maddie tests it by throwing something at her. Moving on. I've seen that man before. So who is he? Ezekiel Sims. He was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. So this next section explains Cassie's history with Ezekiel Sims and Dakota Johnson is getting a little drag for her sleepy line reading on. He was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. Honestly, I wonder if this might have been a line that was just recorded in ADR for the trailer to give viewers some exposition. The back of this photo reads, Constance slash Ezekiel, Peruvian Amazon 1973. So I just gotta take a moment here to note that Morbius's bats came from Costa Rica and from the Craven trailer, there seems to be some mystical connection with lion blood on an African safari. So if this movie is going with a natural spider in the Peruvian Amazon, it could be that Sony is like trying to create a villain verse based on magic and nature as opposed to like technology technology and science. On Constance's notebook, you can see a drawing of a spider and the next page has some writing on it. Related, native, toxic, venomous. Ultimately, I do not think Ezekiel Sims is the villain of this movie. I just think that Cassie sees him killing people in these visions, maybe a plot to brainwash her future visions to turn her against Ezekiel. And this might be something happening to her caused by the inheritors or Morden. Okay, next clip. Wait, I recognize you. You live in my building. You're the paramedic. Yeah, you almost ran me over. You don't think this is weird? How we're all connected? It's honestly like the least weird thing that's happened all day. Okay, we learned the three ways Cassie is connected to these girls. She lives in Anya's building, she sees Julia at the hospital, and she nearly runs over Maddie, who skateboarded in front of her ambulance. So it really is just random people connected to her in her life that she forges a connection between. They did not start this movie as friends, I don't think. We see Ezekiel jumping past a Calvin Klein ad. Set photos also revealed some other ads that were really from the early 2000s, indicating that this film does take place in an earlier time period. Cassie says it's the least weird thing that has happened to her all day, making me wonder if a lot of the events in this movie take place in the same 24 hour period, which would be why the street clothes of Julia, Anya, and Maddie never change. Next part. I have no idea what those girls have come. Why don't you me? I think he can see into the future. Why He's trying to change what happens. Yeah. Julia, get down! 
Okay, we get a quick shot of Julia in a pretty comic accurate black and white Spider Woman suit. Her hair is hanging, so she is upside down here. Then Anya in her Aranya suit. We really only see the eye pieces visible here. But then Maddie in a pretty great looking Spider Woman suit with the mechanical arms. Cassie says that she thinks Ezekiel can see into the future as well. And we see an older version of Ezekiel as Julia casts a gold web like beam to cast around Ezekiel. His gray hair and the way he clings to the side of the building barefoot is what Ezekiel Sims looks like in his 2001 comic debut. So I'm thinking in her visions, Cassie might just see him as a younger man and more of a threat than he really is. On to the next part. Why do you care for me? Your future was almost so different. Why do we if you want to live, you have to trust me. probably our best look at Ezekiel's Spider-Man suit as he stands before the Calvin Klein ad and he's holding something in his hand. I want to believe it's a Green Goblin pumping grenade, but you know, I assume it's gonna be something less interesting. In a chase involving Ezekiel in the ambulance, we see a more controlled version of Cassie's glances into the future where her eyes zoom through this webbing. And I think this definitely is the web of life and destiny. The P from the Pepsi Cola sign drops on Maddie. And I assume her mechanical arms are gonna save her, but I am gonna interpret this P as the Peter Parker references in this movie that keep dropping on these women. In summary, what do I think is going on in this Madam Web movie. So Cassandra is not a professional clairvoyant like she is in the comics. She is a paramedic who is just eager to save lives. And one of these near-death experiences awakens in her the power to see a possible future. It is a more powerful version of what the Spider-Man comics have called arachnofrequency, aka spider sense, which is a cosmic force that links all spider things together through the web of life and destiny. This link is something Cassie might have gotten from her mother, Constance, who, with Ezekiel Sims, probably got bitten by some supernaturally powered spider in the 70s that genetically passed down to to Cassie. This movie is going to use Ezekiel Sims to establish that all Spider-Man and Spider-People were cosmically selected by fate to be a Spider-themed hero. And in this movie, they're being hunted not by Ezekiel Sims, but Ezekiel Sims is warning them about the real hunters. More done for another inheritor who might be Mike Epps' character, also unseen in this trailer. I just think this is how Sony plans to build out its live-action corner of the Spider-Verse to try to explain how Tom Holland, Peter Parker, how Andrew Garfield, Peter Parker, how Tobey Maguire, Peter Parker are connected through a multiverse. And I think Adam Scott is going to be the uncle Ben to a young Peter in this universe, and they'll use that to explain how Madam Web is linked to the Peter Parkers in any universe. Through the web of life and destiny, she's gonna see through the multiverse to peer at any superhero who got bitten by a spider. Now, does this trailer make me excited for this? I don't know. I kind of just want a Helen Mirren cackling old lady Madam Web in a tech advanced chair teaming up with one of these spider women in a wily old Ezekiel Sim scaring everybody. It's just Sony, you don't have to make these characters young, sexy, and cool. Recognize that the characters are already sexy and cool but old. Like, I'm okay calling this ageism. Stan Lee would never stand for this. But I want to know from you. Comment down below with your thoughts on this trailer. Does it make you excited for the movie? Follow me on all social platforms at EA Boss. Subscribe to all three channels of the New Rock Stars Network. Support us by grabbing something from our merch store at nerdriot.shop. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.